the year is nearly over and Christmas is just around the corner. Right now on NRC1, and available in high definition, an Atari ST is in dire need of help. Hello all, welcome back to the emergency room. Today we're dealing with an attack on an Atari ST on a severity of such that I've never seen before. This is an Atari STF 1040, the 1 megabyte of RAM version of the STF, upgraded to have an internal power supply and a double sided disk drive. This poor machine however has certainly had a hard life. Whatever did it do to deserve this level of physical assault? Even the rear ports have been wrecked. Perhaps a stroke of luck or mercy, however, the MIDI ports have survived. There may just be a chance for this abuse all yet. We've left this computer under anaesthetics for now as to prevent any further damage, and we will need to operate before we can wake it up. Its partner too has been abused by the same attacker. Cut down and left for dead. They too have been kept asleep until we can repair the damage. It may require a lot of effort, but we need to save these two.
With the ports on the ST replaced and the power inlet no longer dangerous to use, I'm turning my attention to the SM125 monitor. This should be just a case of remaking the wires and replacing the cut ones. Despite knowing that this monitor has been turned off and unplugged for months, I'm still discharging the CRT just to be safe and to continue good practices. I need to remove the analog board anyway, so removing the anode cap is necessary in this case. I'm also disconnecting the netboard just to prevent any damage from occurring onto the tube. After that I should just need to disconnect the wires and unscrew the analog board to bring it out. These wire retainers are held in place with some tabs. I can use a pair of needle nose pliers to depress them and then push the retainer out. And then I just need to desolder the wires to finish removing the AC cable. I was able to order a replacement DIN 13 plug used for the SD video port and my plan is to cut this VGA cable to use as a replacement. It has the correct rated wire and 15 pins so it should work fine. However it turned out this was not a fully wired cable, instead having only the bare minimum required to work with VGA monitors. This was annoying to find out but in this case it's still just enough wires to make a replacement video cable for the monitor. I used the video port information from infocoach.fr to make my replacement cable, using the pictures to work out what signals needed to go to which pin. It also contained important notes on the monochrome high res mode which I needed since this is a high res monitor. The jumper wire you see is to get the ST to enable this mode. Once soldered and heat shrink I put the plug into a vise and crimp the strain relief tabs before soldering the grounding wire to the shell. At this point, I realised I've made a rookie mistake. See, you're supposed to put the housing cover on BEFORE you attach the connector. Thankfully, I hadn't soldered the other side of the wire yet, so this wasn't too bad in this case, but make sure you put on that cover first. I also decided to wire the original cable's internal plug back on to be safe and know that it will fit the connector. Now onto the power cable, I decided to cut one end off of the C13 extension cable to use. This is 0.75mm squared cable, like the original, to keep the same power rating. You don't want to get the wrong cable and overload the mains cable. I stripped the ends and then crimped on an earthing eyelet to follow the original design. I made sure that the crimp was proper as if the earth wire became disconnected it can create a dangerous situation whereby the entire metal frame becomes live at mains voltage. Once prep work was done, I fed the new cable through the hole in the case and then gave myself an extra length to work with before I secured it with the cable crimp. You can also see here that I've already installed the new video cable too. After that I soldered on the new leads into their respective pads and screw the earphone cable onto the chassis. With that the monitor can go back together. Do not forget to connect the grounding strap on a CRT, it's there for a reason.
With the monitor all back together, the only thing left to do is to test the two to see if they survive the whole ordeal. So, subscribe to the channel and make sure you don't miss part 2 of the series.